What's up everybody, Andrew Mahone here. Welcome to Tricky Gym. Gonna be showing off a sweet deck today, a new Empoleon list that I'm working for for the Sun and Moon on format. Before I get to that, wanna do some sweet Patreon giveaway stuff for my Patreon subs. Now, I was just notified by a Patreon official that I'm actually not allowed to be doing giveaways through Patreon uh, per their terms and services. So, uh, heads up, I will be removing uh, the giveaway stuff from the Squirtle and War Turtle tier on Patreon. That being said, I will still be giving away stuff every month through YouTube to my Patreon subs. So, that's just between me and you here. Uh, it just can't be written on Patreon because that's against their terms and services. They don't want it to be like gambling or anything like that. I don't really see it as gambling. I see it as like, I've got this sweet stuff here lying around and I wanna give it away to the people that help support the channel. So as a show of my gratitude, to my Patreon subs, every month I will continue doing a Patreon giveaway. It just won't be in the actual Patreon descriptions anymore. Now I do still have two tiers. The Squirtle tier uh, gets access to my lens posts, all my Patreon wall posts, and then also gets a one-time uh, sticker pack sent to them uh, from me. So sticker pack just includes the three stickers that are in my Etsy store. So all Patreon subs get a one-time sticker pack sent to them. So you are getting something, uh, you know, just for signing up and do donating as a Squirtle tier patron. Then as a War Turtle tier patron, uh, you get access to one exclusive video a month uh, filmed just for you. Uh, so, or f just for the War Turtle subs. So this last one that I just did was like an hour and 15 minutes. I went over like every single deck in detail that I have built for standard format. And then also I went in and played some, uh, played some PTC games with like some new rogue ideas that I was working on and just shared some of like, you know, kind of my in-house, uh, you know, testing experience in that hour and 15 minute long video. So pretty good value there. War Turtle subs uh, are awesome. So shout out to all my score turtle, uh, <laughs> score turtle. <laughs> shout out to all my Squirtle and War Turtle subs on Patreon. Uh, and I am going to be continuing to do giveaways. Just want to let you guys know uh, a few updates for me first. But today we have got some amazing giveaways. We are giving away a PS a 9 Misty's Determination and a PSA 10 Misty's Determination as well as this beautiful GX counter and now I've only got like 40 of these probably only like 30 now I gave away some to patreon subs that I saw at the world championships and as well to just some of my friends I have a buddy Alex who works in a machine shop this is made of pure aluminum it is a pure aluminum GX counter block beautiful gonna be giving that away and just continuing to give some of these away every month to my patreon subs as well uh, so that's on our to-do list here got three things that were given away uh, uh, shout out to Patreon subs. Then we're going to be getting to the brand new Empoleon deck list. So let's uh, throw all these names here that I have in my trusty old hat. They're all in there. I'm going to give them a good old mix up. And let's see who we have as our first winner. We are going to draw for the, let's see, let's draw for the PSA 9 Misty's Determination first, and we're gonna make sure that we only have one name. And the winner of the PSA 9 Misty's Determination is Connor Salinas. Connor, so Connor S, you win the PSA 9 Misty's Determination. Thank you very much, Connor, for your patronage. Now moving on to the PSA 10 Misty's Determination, we have James Peltier, so James P, James Peltier, you are the winner of that beautiful PSA 10 Misty's Determination. Awesome stuff. Those are going to be sent out your way uh, probably by the time this video airs. And then finally, the winner of the sweet, uh, the aluminum, the one of a kind GX counter that you can only get from me because I'm the only one who knows my buddy Alex who makes them but isn't going to make them anymore because they're actually kind of expensive. He did it for me on the bro side. So shout out to Alex for helping me out with these. Winner of the GX counter is. Uh, Kais Hassanali. So Kais, Kais, sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Uh, Kay, uh, Hassanali, you are the winner of the GX counter. Going to be sending that out your way as well. And again, thank you all so much to all my amazing Patreon subs. You guys rock. And thank you so much to everybody who has said hello to me at the World Championships and all those tournaments, all my, tor all my uh, Patreon subs from overseas. You guys are amazing. I've got all these sticker packs filled out and I'm going to be sending those out as well with all 
of this Patreon stuff. So everybody's going to get their one-time sticker packs that's signed up through Patreon. And uh, yeah, so anyways, here's Empoleon. What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim. I'm going to be playing a game on PTCGO today. And today I am trying a fun deck. I'm trying out Empoleon. I really want to get Empoleon to work in the current standard format. I think that it is just a great non-EX, non-GX attacker, but it has been really tough, not gonna lie, to get this thing to draw correctly without Octillery in format. Empoleon loved having Octillery, it hated having Parallel City. So even though Parallel City is gone, we don't have to deal with that anymore. It is, uh, you know, it is kind of tough to get the deck to draw the way that you want it to, but this is a pretty good starting hand. It's kind of tough to get the deck to draw the way you want it to. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to jam, <laughs> trying to jam a Swampert in here. I would love for that. That's like the dream setup, I think, for Empoleon. Like Empoleon just wants to draw cards every turn, and if you can get Swampert out, then you're pretty much good to go. I have Tapu Koko in here, and I'm playing Counter Energies, and the idea is if, that if we just barely miss a knockout, we can use Tapu Koko's Flying Flip to kind of clean up shop a little bit. Also can be used to soften up defending Pokemon and things like that early on so that pretty much everything falls within Empoleon's one hit KO range. Now Empoleon only does 20 damage times the amount of Pokemon on both mine and my opponent's bench. So my opponent does have some control over how much damage I do, which is a little bit annoying. But what I found in this current standard format is that almost every deck is just maxing out their bench very early on. So it could be okay. Let's start off by just attaching to this Coco here and, and just hope that my opponent doesn't have it like that. Then we're going to Lily for a draw of four. That is a pretty good draw of four, not going to lie. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to Ultra Ball away. I think the Piplup and the Choice Band. I think we're going to Ultra Ball away the Piplup and the Choice Band. And we're going to go get ourselves a Vulpix. Don't be gone. All right, Vulpix is in here. Good. So we're going to go get ourselves our Vulpix. And then we can Beacon here. And we're looking like we got a pretty decent setup here. So that is pretty good. We're going to Beacon. We can go get ourselves, uh, I guess we want Swampert. And then we can go get a Piplup. We could also get ourselves, yes, let's get ourselves a Lele. So now we can kind of just set up and, uh, you know, get that Tapu Lele. We can get ourselves a supporter next turn. We got Swampert, so long as my opponent doesn't knock it out. And we could be pretty good to go here. This could be pretty nice. Now, Super Boost is a little bit funny in this deck. Like, maybe it's not the best thing ever. But you can use it on Swampert, even though it's glitched on PTCGO right now. It should make con uh, Swampert do 160 damage. I was trying it out the other day, and it was only doing 100 for some reason. So hello, if you work at Pokemon, please fix this. Uh, that was a little bit annoying. But Super Boost Energy can also be used on your Empoleons and things like that, even if you are not behind in prizes. So could be pretty good. We've got ourselves rare candy, very good. Set up Swampert, excellent. Then I do have Ultra Ball, though I don't really think that I actually want to play it. I think that I am just going to attach Super Boost to one of my uh, Piplups here. I could also attach it and retreat the Vulpix with it, but I'm not going to do that either. Let's just uh, attach that there, and then we are going to uh, yes, we're going to go get our supporter card. We're going to get a Cynthia. That's cool. And then what we can do is we can power draw away our own water energies, and then we can aqua patch them back. So that's pretty neat as well. Sick. All right. So we got ourselves a, another Empoleon here. That's great. Uh, not an, another Empoleon, a first Empoleon. So that's very good. And then we can power draw. We can actually get rid of that nest ball. We probably shouldn't be needing that. And I guess with like power draw, maybe Lily isn't like the best supporter. I just wanted, uh, my thought process was that I wanted like strong openings. And Tate and Liza, I feel like it's a very kind of middling, uh, a little bit weak opening supporter. So not super impressed by it. Let's just beacon for Primplup and for our Empoleon here, and now we should pretty much be good to go. Now the Super Boost does count as a Water Energy, so I can just attach and Guzma next turn. 
pretty much good to go on that front. I do want to keep at least two Empoleons that I'm kind of working on at all points in time here. And so as soon as my opponent, if they decide to like knock out this Vulpix, we'll be good to go. And I can just like Guzma and get started and kind of get off to the races here as far as doing tons of damage goes. So as it is right now, we're doing two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 160 with the choice band, I'm doing 190 damage. So if my opponent puts a Lele down, I could knock out a Lele. And that is unfortunate that we're just like a little bit short. I did see my opponent discard Max Potion as well. So I know my opponent plays Max Potion. What I might decide to do is just Guzma and get my Tapu Koko out into the active position and then just start trying to spread a little bit while I continue setting up my board uh, to try and just like weaken some of the Pokemon up. Now, what I want to play in this deck is Shrine of Punishment. I really want to play Shrine of Punishment in here because Shrine just seems completely insane, right? Like Shrine seems really, really good because then uh, because then you can kind of help bring the opponent's Pokemon down into the range that like you can knock out. So as we see here, Lily is like literally not going to be doing anything for me. So we probably got to switch out those Lilies. We probably can't be having that. Oh, busted. Okay, so we do have the other uh, copy of Empoleon as well, which is absolutely sick. And we can Guzma something up and we can hit it. Uh, we, well, we said we were doing like you know, 190 right now with a choice band, or I can uh, just go flying flip. I feel like flying flip is like the better play, but I also could just go and start like softening. I could actually just like knock out this Curlia as well is an option. I think like flying flip is probably the better play. So let's like Guzma up. I think just something annoying for my opponent to deal with uh, probably yeah, let's, let's just bring up the Curlia, that's fine. And then uh, we can just start flying flipping, that's fine. I don't mind that at all. My, you know, Empoleon has the super boost energy on it, so it's ready to go. The worst thing would be if my opponent decided to Guzma up and knock out this Empoleon. But if my opponent were to do that, uh, you know, I could potentially uh, use my counter energy then, that would be good. I also would be able to just flying flip again. So I do have that option available to me. If my opponent decides to uh, just ignore the Tapu Koko, I'm just gonna keep flying flipping here. And my opponent will just be taking that damage. And the more damage they take with flying flip, the uh, you know the more stressful that gets. So I'm thinking like, I probably should have brought up like this Ralts or something like that, but it's it's fine. This is just, uh, you know, I, I don't know why I brought up the Curly instead of the Ralts. Probably the Ralts would have been more annoying. Now we are in it. Oh, my opponent decided to put down a Lele. I'm assuming they gotta go for a draw supporter. They don't really have any auxiliary draw out. That's part of why I just love Swampert so much. I think that any deck that can get the Swampert engine up and running is just, uh, it, it's amazing. It really is just the draw, the power to draw three every turn is really incredible. So let's see here. My opponent, you know, just put that down for me. I can use counter energy now. So let's put this one up here and let's, uh, let's make it happen. So that's very good too. I can aqua patch. So we're going to aqua patch to that guy, start to build up another Piplup, another Empoleon here. And then I can counter energy. Funny enough, I could actually attack with my Swampert as well. Uh, we do choice ban, aqua patch. We can like, you know, with the counter energy, we can make that happen. Also, like I said, super boost as well. So we are doing, let's, uh, let's power draw a little bit. Let's, let's discard a water energy here and get to draw on some cards see what we get okay pretty busted here definitely some good stuff uh, I haven't attached an energy yet so I am going to attach counter energy to the active and then we're doing uh, what 9 180 to 10 perfect so let's put that choice band on there and total command all right for 210 damage pretty awesome there the Coco did exactly what I wanted it to just brought everybody into that range and as you can see this is exactly why I want to play Shrine of Punishment in this deck just to help get those extra knock Knockouts. I feel like this deck is always just like a little bit short of a knockout because your opponent can kind of like keep themselves within that range. So you need a little bit something extra to kind of help even things out and just make things a little smoother. So 
I don't know. Right now it's the cocoa and the counter energies. I do like the counter energies. I think the counter energies kind of help smooth this deck out. Now, if my opponent doesn't get a response, like you just go in and you attach a water, and that's like the same thing as, uh, you know, it's the same thing. It's good. The counter energies are just good with Empoleon. I wasn't super hip on the counter energies before, but now I'm like definitely, definitely about it. So we have another Guzma, which means that I can just like go and, and just take out that Lele there on the bench. I think uh, I'd rather, what do we got? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. Yeah, so 150. Oh, my opponent is short. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. Uh, why didn't 3, 6, 9, 12, 15? That's bugged. That should have been 18, right? Because I'm ahead on prizes, so that should have counted as two. Times the amount of energy attached to both. Yeah, that was bugged. I think like I should have been knocked out there. So that is a little bit funny, but uh, but game on. I mean, I don't know, like we're playing the game here. So that's just uh, that's just a bug. I think I've noticed that, you know, Pokemon, uh, you know, PTCGO here is a little bit buggy with some of these, uh, you know, double energy things as they pertain to some of these extra Pokemon here. So that is pretty crazy. We're gonna get ourselves out another Empoleon and then we could just like, you know, go in. I mean, uh, my opponent is not getting knocked out by this. I can Whirlpool discard an energy attached to my opponent's active Pokemon. That's like kind of interesting. I don't know that it's necessarily worth it. I'm gonna do one, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. So I'm a little bit short on knocking out like, you know, I'm, uh, knocking out like that Lele or anything. I think we just go in and uh, I like this big hand, so I'm not gonna like mess with it. I think we just go in here. I can't actually Whirlpool, I don't know what I'm talking about. We can only total command, so that's fine. We're a little bit short here. Uh, we're 20 damage short. So that's what I'm saying, like there, like that Brooklyn Hill is worthless now, right? And I'm playing a couple copies of Brooklyn Hill, but I feel like you just have to set the deck up. If the deck doesn't set up, you're just like, uh, I mean, you're trying to get two stage two set up into play. I mean, you want as much access to these cards as possible. Once the deck is stabilized, it's completely stable. I mean, it, you're just kind of in cruise control, just doing huge amounts of damage with total command, which is a lot of fun. Now, you don't like enhanced hammer with this deck. I'm not going to lie. I mean, your counter energies, you know, you want them to stick. You want your boost energy to stick, all that. Uh, and speaking of boost energy, here goes the boost energy. So that is a little bit annoying wing and I also cannot counter energy because my opponent is not like behind on prizes so we are just going to end up guzmaing though so we will we will do that we're just going to guzma up that guy and take the knockout where we have it uh, and then I would like to let's uh, put a Pokemon from our discard pile into our hand I would like to go get myself this Coco I think like I think the Coco will eventually be good uh, I can power draw, I guess. Uh, that actually was a misplay. I should have shuffled like the whole line back in, and then I should have uh, then nest balled for the Coco. So like that's that's all good. Kind of want to like play that just to waste it. Um, I don't want anything with it. What I want is to start yes, getting this going as well. I just want to get this down, and then I think I attach. Like, I'm not going to be behind on prizes is the thing. So, like, I kind of have to be a little bit, like, careful on how I close this game out. I'm not sure that the Coco is going to be the one to do it. I think, I mean, if I put an energy on it, it's, like, better than nothing. I don't really need that Brooklyn Hill either. It would be better as a shrine. Uh, it would be way better as a shrine. So, I think here that we are going to end up Guzming up that other Guardy for sure. 210. Uh, I can't, like I said, I can't knock it out. Uh, with the counter energy. So we're just going to put, I think we're going to put a counter energy on it. And then let's just Guzma and bring that guy up. Okay. So this is where we're at now. So now if my opponent does get ahead, maybe I can, uh, you know, maybe let's see 190. I was doing 190. That's the one with the choice band. That's why I did 190. Okay. I was like, I'm a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit off there with my damage, but okay. So my opponent's still like in a fine spot. And if they had gotten the knockout on the Empoleon, the whole game is different. I'm not exactly sure why the counter energies are not counting there for an infinite force, but that is a bug. So that is uh, that's a little bit annoying. I feel like that my opponent definitely should have gotten that knockout there. 
previously. So they're definitely scoring the knockout on this active. I wonder if they have a judge or anything. Probably not. They don't really have any sort of extra draw going on. I think they're just going to be all in. Yep, just like all hands on deck. They're all in on this active guardy here. Now I can like just bench a Pipple up here um, and then, you know, maybe start building up somebody else. We're going to promote the Coco. That's very good. Uh, I can just, you know, flying flip. Uh, I have another rescue stretch or two. So that's pretty good. I think that I do rescue stretcher some things back in. Um, I mean, maybe I could eventually take a knockout on the Vulpix. I know my opponent does play. They're really trying to limit their bench now. So like that is annoying for me. Let's uh, let's power draw. I only got 10 cards left in deck, but that's fine. Let's power draw. I don't think that I'm going to be getting this Swampered out into play. So let's let's just see what we get here. We do have Aqua Patch, so that's good. I feel like I probably start to put energy onto my Swampert. Uh, I can do that. Uh, I also could just like total command this thing, but I don't. And like if I total command the thing, then my opponent like is kind of pressured to actually take a knockout. That or I like flying flip it. I feel like I kind of total command it. They won't be able to like max potion and knock me out. So I feel like I kind of do that. Let's do that there. Let's put that there. Let's aqua patch and put one energy and how many aqua patch do I have? This one? Just one. Okay, let's put the energy onto the swampert, kind of like that. And then let's just retreat into this guy. And we're doing two, four, six, eight, well, 140. So what's 140, 160? Then my opponent will have 70 hit points left. Okay, so that's interesting. Uh, what can do 70? Wave Splash can do 70, interestingly enough. So let's, uh, you know, if I put the, then they'll have 40 left. If I put the choice band on, I think I want to save the choice band. So let's just save the choice band in case I end up needing it. So this thing is in uh, Dire Straits now. And as I'm just playing the deck, I just know that this deck wants to have Shrine in play more than it wants to have Brooklet Hill. Like that Brooklet Hill has been useless this game, but it's, it's fine. I think like I don't know. I've also had games where I just start Shrine and I just don't get set up and then the deck is like actually trash. So that is bad as well. I also think that I'm out of Guzmas. I think I'm only playing two Guzma. I think they're both gone. So that's kind of tough too. I think decks that play the Swampert engine can potentially, oh, and they just don't have it like that. So they're just going to knock that out, go to two prizes. Okay. So I think at this point... Uh, I wonder if I actually have another Aqua Patch in my deck. Uh, I probably messed this up, I'm thinking. So I probably should have just like attached to this guy and then I could have like attacked that thing for game. So that's like a thing I could have done. Let's uh, let's evolve here. Let's, um, I can't use Flying Flip because we're on the same amount of prizes. So let's uh, let's draw first. Uh, let's yeah let's let's draw first. Let's power draw. I actually don't need all these Cynthia's for sure. So let's see what we can get off of this and see if we have another Aqua Patch in deck. I don't think I do. So like that's a little bit concerning. I could just be out, and I could just be like 20 damage short of being able to win this game because if I'm flying flip then we're just in like a horrible spot. So we might be short here. Let's Ultra Ball and see like what is in the deck. Do I have an Aqua Patch? I do have an Aqua Patch, I just missed it. Okay, so let's uh, let's just, <laughs> let's try to win this game already. Okay, uh, so we need to go get that Aqua Patch. Cool, done. All right, so there's nothing in there that I can, I probably, now that I know that I'm like digging for the Aqua Patch, I should have like definitely played that differently because I could have, uh, ensured that I would hit it. Put a Pokemon. I think I might still be able to ensure that I put a Pokemon from my discard pile into my hand. Uh, let's just get the Pipla up. Okay. Yeah, let's just get that. And then I think I, I there's going to be like one card. Maybe? No, I draw my whole deck. Okay, so I'm good. I get to draw my whole deck, and we're going to get Aqua Patch, and we can win. So that that was a long draw out way to, uh, to accomplish, uh, you know, 
I know, right? This is this is crazy. So there we go. Hydro pump. We did it. Okay. So that was a wild game there. Absolutely crazy. Uh, I guess the deck did what it was supposed to do, but it didn't feel good, right? Like I think it felt almost very good. Empoleon is very, uh, you know, very big. He's big. He does a lot of damage. He puts your opponent into some weird situations. I'm going to try a version with like Shrine of Punishment. We're going to switch this up real quick. And we're going to take a look at this list. And we're going to put some Shrines in here. Let's, uh, instead of my two Brooklets, like, I mean, two Brooklets, eh, like, whatever. Okay, I'd, I'd be more excited if those were Shrines. So, Let's put those in there, Shrine of Punishment, and then that way, you know, you kind of have like two turns where you get a little bit of extra boost to your damage output. We decided that Lily was pretty much horrible, so let's try Tate and Liza instead, I think, just like Shuffle Draw 5, probably a little bit better. One Judge, two Guzma, I think maybe you play, instead of two Guzma, you might play like a... Uh, like maybe you play a pal pad instead, but I like I like two Guzma. That felt very good. So I think we're just gonna ship it like this. Yeah, and we're gonna try one more game with Empoleon, see if we can get it to do just as good as it did that time. That'd be pretty sweet. So Empoleon, I think, man, if we can get this to work with you know the uh, the draw engine in there and with the shrines, if we can get the whole thing to do exactly what it's supposed to do then this deck could be something cool. I think that Empoleon is one of just the best uh, the best non-EX, non-GX attackers in format right now. But, you know, and then here we go. So, like, I think I have this theory that whenever you edit a deck uh, to put a card in it, that, like, PTCGO's algorithms just, like, slaps that card into your opening hand. So, like, if you are editing your deck and you want to put, like, a Sycamore, like a one of Sycamore in your deck or something like that, uh, my theory is that Pokemon will just always give you that card in your opening hand. I've noticed it uh, quite a bit. I, you know, I'm a little bit suspicious, uh, but that's just uh, that's just what we got going on here. So it looks like we might be playing against a metal deck here. This hand, this starting hand, is a little bit suboptimal. I don't love it. This is, uh, you know, one of those where maybe you wish that you just uh, maybe you wish that you had like a lily in your deck still. Uh, but this is fine. My opponent is playing the. Strike and run Dunsparce. I've been thinking about that quite a bit. So this is good. Okay, this is much, much better. I think I save my uh, Shrine of Punishment, actually, for later in the game. I think I just save it for later. So I think I'm going to Ultra Ball away a Priplup and the water there. I'm going to go get myself a, I guess, okay, yeah, my Vulpix is prized, and you can see how thin the deck is, right, that I just don't, I only got room for one Vulpix in here, and that's, that's fine, you don't always need Vulpix, so I'm gonna put that guy down, I'm not gonna put my Shrine down yet, because, like, my opponent might have their own stadium, or they might uh, have some other things going on, so, ooh, this is busted, all right, this is very good, so we can go get ourselves a, I think I want Tapu Koko here, my opponent like knocks something out early. Uh, let's get a prep level. All right, we'll get we'll get a prep level. I'm like worried if my opponent like knocks out this, uh, you know, if they knock out this thing here, I'm just gonna be in like a little bit of a rough spot. I don't like super want to play my aqua patch yet. I think I'd rather save it, but that's that's fine. We'll uh, we'll just wait and see how this next turn goes. I do have power draw, so that's good, and my only judge in my hand. So maybe I can like judge my opponent and get power draw going. Uh, at least we know that this. You know, I doubt my opponent's slapping another DCE and gonna knock out this print bluff. Like maybe they're gonna go ham Lele here, but I doubt it. Like that doesn't seem like the best strategy. I think they'd rather retreat into Dunsparce and do something a little bit more along the lines of setting up their deck, which is great for me. Like, I just want them to do that. Like, please put as many bench Pokemon into play as you can and allow me to just score some, like, really sick one-hit KOs that you're not expecting. That's my dream. So this deck, I, it feels like on the edge of greatness. Like, there's some way. Like, I just wish there was some other draw engine that we could play. And maybe you can play like Empoleon Zorark. Maybe just Empoleon Zorark is better, but then you don't get to play the shrines, right? I think like you want it to be all non-GX Pokemon. Also, Zoroarks are just huge targets for your opponent to knock out. And so like your draw engine is constantly being targeted down by your opponent's deck. 
case in point, we're playing against a Solgaleo GX deck, right? Like they would absolutely love it if I, uh, you know, if I just put some like big beefy GXs down into play for them to one hit KO. They, it would just be like fantastic for them. So let's uh, let's just do our Aqua Patch here. I'm fine with that. And then let's just judge us. I guess we're judging us both. I don't want to do that, but I guess my opponent doesn't really have a hand going on, but that's that's fine. And then we can just evolve our guy here. That's okay. And then I think that I just, yeah, I think I power draw away. Yeah, I guess I power draw away the water and I keep the, yeah, I do that. I keep the Lele just in case I want a supporter, I think. And then I can evolve the active, but I don't know that that's something that I want to do. This guy looks like he's getting knocked out. He does have 90 hit points though, so like he might not get knocked out. If I, you know, if I attach to the active, you know, two, four, six, eight, my opponent would need to, I think like I actually like setting up counter energy though, so that I can use it. Like that'd be pretty cool. So if we do like two, four, six, eight, we're doing 160, I actually like could knock it out with my own Swampert, which would be pretty dope, but like I don't want to put Swampert in harm's way either. So I think we just like peacefully attach this here and then we pass, I guess. Um, or we could put it on the active. I don't have any switch cards though. It's just Lele. But I can Lele for Guzma and like go just go get something. Let's let's just pass. Okay. Tough call, but I, I'm gonna pass. I don't want to evolve my active into Primplup at the expense, you know, like maybe he just ends up getting knocked out. Also, you know, setting up my own counter energy is fine. Yeah, uh, I could have gone all in, like slap two counter energies onto the Swampert. That just seems like a very all in play that I like just don't need to be taking a part of. I don't really need to do that. I mean, threatening my Swampert to get knocked out. You want the Swampert to be low key the entire time. You do not want anyone to be looking at the Swampert like, yeah, let's knock that guy out. Yep, and sure enough. Okay, here comes Piplup, but my opponent, isn't going to knock me out. They're just going to soul burst. So I don't know why. Yeah, what are they doing? Oh, are they going to do 80? Oh, they're knocking me out with Lele. Okay, now you made me mad, man. Now I'm thinking that I probably, oh, geez, that's like a little bit frustrating. Okay, that's fine. This counter energy is activated. Let's go in here and see what we can do. We do have Shrine of Punishment at this point. Like, I'm just slapping that thing down. My opponent doesn't have a lot else going on. Then I am going to attach my counter energy to the active. I'm doing this. And then, oh, I shouldn't have put the counter energy on the active. I don't know what I'm thinking. I didn't realize it already had a counter. So that's fine. We're going in with Cynthia. And then I'm going to evolve this benched up here. So we're going to Cynthia for six, and then hopefully we get rare candy and also our man. Oh, we didn't get rare candy yet. Okay, let's thin our deck a little bit more. Let's get ourselves probably a Coco to just like, you know, soften some things up there. And also, yeah, let's do that. And let's get ourselves a Mudkip. Sure. And then we are going to uh, Power Draw. Come on, we need a we need ourselves a rare candy here. That'd be fantastic. Give me a rare candy. That'd be good. Oh, no, we didn't get one. All right, so that's fine. We're just going to retreat peacefully into our, yeah, that's fine. Just just get rid of that, yeah. And then we can Ultra Ball away. I don't want to Ultra Ball anything away. I know, they're very excited that I didn't get it uh, against them. That's fine. I don't really want to Ultra Ball anything away, so I think... I think we just sit here and hope that we get rare candy and pull on next turn. I think that's what we do. I don't want to, yeah, we're, we're fine. Everything in this hand is too valuable. So, and I have my own Lele here. It's going to be taking Shrine of Punishment damage, but that's fine. Everything in this deck one hit KO is my Lele, so I don't really care. That's, you know, we're just playing one Lele in this deck. So, my opponent gets the Timer Ball. They still have not gone for that Soul Burst yet. So I'm hoping that hopefully they don't have a way to remove this shrine. Maybe we can bring that Solgaleo down a little bit into like potential KO range for myself. Uh, they are bringing this thing. Okay, I think it's it's time to soul burst. Like they are not having it anymore, and that's fine with me. Honestly, I'm just going to flying flip this turn, and I'm just going to like weaken everything up, and then we're going to try to come screaming in with some Empoleons here. I don't think, yeah, I'm like not getting a one hit KO on this thing right now. I'm doing 200 damage. Actually, if I were to get a choice band, 
I could do 200. Okay, so actually, I don't want to speak too soon. If I get an Empoleon uh, off of this Tate and Liza here, I can knock out, I could just knock out the Solgaleo GX because of the shrine. So I think what, it's going to be taking 20 here. I actually, yeah, I just need the... Uh, just need the choice band. This thing's a goner. So that's uh, not choice. And I have the choice band here. So that's kind of nuts. But I'm going to like go here first. And then I'm going to aqua patch to that guy here. And then my thought is that I'm going to Tate and Liza first. I uh, will have. Uh, it's tough. I think I Tate and Liza first. Let's Tate and Liza. And I'm not going to evolve that Empoleon in my hand just to kind of increase the odds that I see an Empoleon in this hand. Okay, so like we saw Empoleon. That's what I was hoping. Now we just need to find rare candy. I'm going to thin our deck by two. Uh, I'm going to actually get one of each here. I have three rare candies in the deck. Now we just need to power draw into one. So let's... Uh, I didn't mean to get... Okay, yeah, I know. This is fine. All right, let's get that Tate and Liza out of here and see if we can hit ourselves rare candy. 16 cards in deck. Yeah, didn't happen. So that's fine. But we did get a choice band. So I can't attach, though. I already attached return. So that's tough, man. These rare candies are just eluding me, eluding me completely. So that is a bummer. I guess I could have attached to here and then I, you know, would have given myself two options. But I kind of wanted to flying flip this turn. So that's like... That's fine. This is just the path that we're on. We're flying flipping here. And, you know, it can help me win the game uh, by softening everything up here a good amount. Uh, at this point, though, I really would have loved to have taken that guy out. Like, I, you know, I don't play Guzmas, so my opponent's going to, like, bring up this thing or whatever, probably. Actually, he's only got three energy on it, so they might not. They might just have nothing and have to just, uh, you know, have to soul burst. Uh, you know, not soul burst, but Sun Strail strike my Tapu Koko, and that kind of always feels bad, especially since they just know, yeah, they are going to have to <laughs> do that. So that just is, like, a major feel bad for my opponent. Like, that's there's no reality where they want that to be their play so here we go up with empoleon and we are good to go i mean we're just like cruising now that uh that stadium is sticking real hard so we can just uh yeah we're gonna attach there we are going to draw some cards let's uh discard a water there and at this point we should definitely hit a rare candy okay i was gonna say like that is ridiculous if we don't we're going to rescue stretcher and get ourselves a pipla back there very good. And I don't think that I need to like prioritize setting up two, um, two Swamperts right now. We'll kind of just save it. I think I might want another Empoleon instead. So we're kind of going to wait on that. I actually really like this hand though, and I don't really want to get anything out of this hand. So uh, I'm assuming my opponent is not going to have any sort of way to, uh, to mess with my hand this turn. So we're just going to total command for knockout here which is good, and then, you know, we should be able to attack with the back. Even if my opponent knocks that thing up, we've got Guzmas, we've got Counter Energy here, like, we're good to go. I have Aqua Patch available to me. I have Power Draw available to me, so we're very, very good right now. Power Draw is great for just, like, getting you through your deck, which is actually really hard in a format just full of just shuffle draw cards, right? It's just all shuffle draw all the time. So, you know, getting through your deck is definitely, definitely super valid. Let's just go knock this thing out like this. So Galio's got to go. I'm not going to deal with some sort of guy here just like knocking my dudes out. Like can't have it. So let's Ultra Ball away, I think. Ooh, yeah, none of these are things that I want to Ultra Ball away, actually. <laughs> Ultra Ball is very tough to play in this deck, and I also don't want to. I think my Judge is down, yeah, so I don't actually want to, like, really power draw if I can help it either. So speaking of that, I don't think that we'll be playing the Swampert. That's fine. I think that that's a no-go. So we're going to go get this guy here, and then we're going to Rare Candy and evolve into that dude there, and then we get to Aqua Patch so that we're powering that back up and pulling on up very good and then i think uh we don't have any gx's to knock out so we're just gonna knock i mean i do i can knock out the ley light but that doesn't really advance my board state in the way that i want it to so i think we're just gonna go in like this and just total command here for knockout and at this point 
you know, we need to be just very careful of our duck count. Like we are getting kind of dangerously close here down the wire. Uh, and what's funny is like this Lele is just going to eventually rot there. And that is that just is what it is. So I think Empoleon like seems pretty good. I think it has potential, but I think the deck is just very clunky and kind of temperamental, which is exactly how I felt about it last format too. But the deck definitely gets way, way stronger without Parallel City. I mean, it's actually kind of like a valid thing now. It's not just total gimmick city. Like the deck is actually kind of threatening. Like you really do kind of have to watch out for what I got going on here because it is a lot. And, you know, I mean, we could even get that super boost out. We could whip up another attacker out of nowhere here. We definitely just, like, have a lot of options. My opponent is very much struggling to, <laughs> to get set up here to do much of anything. So let's see. We got Guzma. I think we just go and take out... Um, that's tough. I don't want to... Really, I got back-to-back -back Guzma, so like that's that's just fine. I think we just do that. So I think we just take out the Lele here with this guy. And then the unfortunate thing is that I kind of get put into a spot where I just like need to... Uh, I think I do power draw, actually. So let's just get rid of that choice band. All I need is an energy, so I would like to just attach an energy. Yeah, there we go. So now we're like good. Now all I need to do is just like Guzma something else out and knock it out with total command. So we're going to knock out that Lele there, go down to one prize. All I need to do is just Guzma for game. If my opponent does something silly, and there's my super boost, that's what I really wanted. If my opponent does something silly and like Guzma's something of mine, then I just have win on board. They would have to do something insane like enhanced hammer. Yeah, it just enhanced hammer and knock out the active and also. So, you know, I, I don't know. I don't think that they got it. So I think that they just, yeah, they try to take out my Swampert. I am not using Swampert anymore. Swampert has done his job. Uh, I was actually very pleased. You know, it got me to three cards remaining in my deck, which is exactly what I needed it to do. And he's just going to pass. He doesn't have three in play. But guess who does is this guy. So, uh, you know, I, I can use my own super boost, but I don't need to. I can just Guzma up. Uh, you know, this little guy here, and we can knock him out for game. So 2-0 with the Empoleon deck, definitely fun. Uh, you know, I think that the deck is fun, and it could be decent. Uh, I'm still working on the list, of course, but the list, uh, what we got so far, is pretty solid. I mean, the deck is drawing pretty solid. I am a huge fan of, a uh, huge fan of the, uh, the Swampert. I think that Swampert is just, like, absolutely wild. So this is what I got going on with the list right now. Like I said, there are a few things that I don't love about it. I don't love that we don't have any natural switch cards. Like, we've got two Guzma, two Titan Lies, and that's that's it. We also have the one Tapu Koko, and that inclusion is valid. I mean, you can uh, counter energy on it, and just having a free retreater in play for Aqua Patch is very good pretty much all the time, so you never mind having the Tapu Koko out at all. Two Rescue Stretcher is good, uh, just help you get your Pokemon back out. I mean, Empoleon depends on having a full bench in order to do damage. So like you absolutely need that. I do think that the shrines are just way better than the brooklets. So I definitely am about playing shrine in this deck. Super boost, you know, could be a fourth uh, counter energy. That's what it was. It was a fourth counter energy. And I was like, you know what? I think super boost just better. So that's just uh, personal preference. And then we have just the one Lele in there. As you can see, Ultra Ball was just a super weird card to play in this deck. I was trying to build the list without Ultra Ball at first. I wanted to just build it with Nest Balls and timer balls and just more supporters but ultra ball just it just makes your deck more consistent you kind of just have to take it even though there are times where i just did not want to discard anything uh, especially early on you really don't but it's fine you can discard waters for aqua patches there are some things that you can discard there so anyways let me know what you guys think of empoleon in the comments below make sure to like the video sub the channel ring that bell and thank you to everybody who supported this channel by uh you know through patreon Patreon and the Etsy store and everything like that. Y'all are awesome. You rock. Take it easy. Peace.